Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the show. You're tuned into Blaze Radio for another episode of the Wrestle Sense podcast. And uh, a pretty wild week for wrestling. I mean, we could talk about Raw, we could talk about NXT, we could talk about ABW, but we're going to talk about the end of the year as it's about to go down. We're going to give you guys in the live chat an opportunity to tell us who you think wins the year end awards as well. But of course, as always, let's take a look at who is here. We got Wally, Wally, Wally. Good job. Good to see you, Wally. Brian Hernsberger's in the building. Ram from the other side of the planet watching in. Always a pleasure, my friend. Love having people from all over the world checking us out. Monstars cooking for New Year's Eve. Hey now, what's cooking, Monstar? And let's see who else we got chilling here. Chaos Reaper, a big supporter of the channel. Appreciate you, my friend. Bringing his own digital wrestling show here soon, too, as well. Big shout out to Chaos Reaper, one of the members of the channel. And Lady Devil also brings you Mythic Legends Wrestling here. Uh, Greek gods and goddesses in, in the game. It's always fun to watch his show. Count Z. <laughs> Never mind him. He's a peckerhead. Uh, Platinum Dragon Studios is in the building. Shifty showing his support. I appreciate you, man. Big time, big time. I'm sorry, Count. I, 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 I'm only here to crack jokes on you, Count. And you know, I'm ready for my new uh, T-shirt coming out, which says, uh, I'm good at bad jokes. So there you have that. So everybody, welcome in, welcome in. ONW is in the place. Great to see you. Uh, K-Dog. I saw K-Dog in here somewhere. K-Dog's in a building. The Crazy 8 champion in the house. Good to see you, K-Dog. Hot Fire Rose is getting hot in here. Uh-oh, what's going on? Happy New Year. That's right. We're going to close out the year. Andy Price from the other side of the planet as well. Big shout out to you. Great to see you. MSW, another supporter of the channel. And uh, I broke the news the other night on, on one of the LTD shows. We're going to expand the membership to some new things in the new year, as well as this show is going to expand to some new and fun stuff right around the bend. So I hope you guys stick around for that and enjoy it. Rob Matchett. We got our Canadian contingent in the building. Great to see you. Great to see you. You're the greatest peckerhead. That's something to brag about, bro. That's something to back, brag about, of course. PF Dubs in the building as well. Great to see everybody. Welcome. And we got a couple things we're going to talk about. We're going to try to kind of breeze through the show tonight a little quicker. Pick who you think uh, wins the year-end awards in a pretty wild year in wrestling as uh, we see more of a revival uh, of pro wrestling all over in different companies. A lot of companies on the up and up too. And we always talk about um, Southwestern Pennsylvania indie wrestling as well. And at the end of the show, we always let you guys know wherever you're at, make sure you guys su uh, support indie wrestling. Um, it is it is blowing up as well all over the place. Uh, so speaking of blowing up all over the place, CJ Sensation <laughs> is in the What's building. What's up, brother? Good to see you. So we got to get the weekly uh, CJ update on the old uh, We got to 170 degrees today. So this is the first time in oh, that's hot. close that's to a year that I'm able to actually lift my arm up over my head. So I have a follow-up with... Which head? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you gotta follow. So you're done I, for the year. I saw your picture. You're not. You know, no more PT. Uh, uh next week I go Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. But I mean, yeah. New Year's Saturday. Know, two days. So I yeah, know. I'm but, good at bad uh, jokes. Yeah. Follow up uh, with the surgeon next Thursday. Hopefully, get rid of um, the uh, sling and be able to start to do some rotation stuff. I'm ready to fuck shit up. Yeah, that's what I like to hear, Brandon. You know, <laughs> we talk about what's hot in the wrestling world. We'll get there. It's definitely hot. So, patience, yeah. patience, patience, patience. Uh, speaking of patience, here's our resident patient, the doctor. Doc, <laughs> what's, going what's going on, on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? How are what's you? How was, how was your Christmas with the boy and everything? It was amazing. He got so many wrestlers. He had, uh, believe it or not, Santa left under the tree. One WWE box, two AEW boxes, plus four AEW wrestling buddies, and yours truly. Got him the ring with Aubrey Edwards. He's in heaven right now. So he's actually playing wrestlers right now as we speak. So the wrestling buddies, for some people that don't know, they're the little, um, like the pillow things, right? Yeah, yeah, but they're a little bit smaller. I can actually present one later, show show, sure. show you what they do and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. You said, make sure the off switch is on. Like, you could turn them off and on. Turn them off because once you put them on their back, you hear Aubrey go, one, two. <laughs> and it, it's, they're, pretty, they're pretty fun. Well, I wouldn't mind getting Aubrey on her back, to be honest. <laughs> Walter, I'm talking wrestling, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Wally. We're talking a little wrestling. That's what we do here. Um and uh Ray easy Ramesh. might show up. If not, we'll be good to go if regardless. Not, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're gonna get right into it. Um, we're gonna go into the first segment and just get uh, a real quick run in the first segment about let's make some sense of it. Stay tuned. So I got a really uh, great reaction from these two guys when I showed them the slideshow and what the what the first uh, first segment is going to be, and that's kind of the reason why I did this. Uh oh, he wants CJ for the Impact Hall of Fame. <laughs> I gotta get the Impact first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm go. all for it. But... <laughs> so we're gonna talk about two different uh, things going on right now in the wrestling world, um, and we're gonna try to make some sense of it. So without further ado, he's coming. <laughs> Oh, so yay. we, so the reaction we got was who the fuck cares? Yeah, and, I, I really don't give two shits or a fuck. No, yeah, big well, deal. So it, they, if for those that don't know, uh, they've been advertising a man who's already had fights on WWE TV. Yeah, but to bring him back, and I think uh, they're already aware of the comedic nature of this coming soon. Uh, what's going down? Because look at the posts over the last ten weeks. It's the same thing. He's coming. He's coming. He's, he's coming. He's coming to foreign Val Venus. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going to hopefully. Val he's... Venus is at least entertaining. Yeah. So, Hello, so let the ladies. sexual innuendos fly about him coming and he's maybe hopefully shooting blanks or he'll have a bunch of kids or when's he coming? Is he walking? I hope he never shows up. No, is he walking from spot. India? Is it taking him that long? I mean, who's going to show up? Well, I if mean... he's getting all that, then how is he's probably hard for him to walk? Yes, it might be. It might be. Well, Sorry, he's com- Ramesh. He's coming every week, but uh, he's not coming. He's yeah. one of your people, Ram. I hope he doesn't come. <laughs> so, I mean, the consensus, you know, between us three, we've already established that who cares? Who cares? Uh, yes. Speaking of coming, he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> Sorry, boys and gals. I had to take a Vince Russo. Yeah. Uh, Ow. Yeah. Speaking of Russo, we, 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 we just started out and we're talking about this guy coming. But if you mentioned Russo, I want to talk about Bischoff. We had a Bischoff sighting this week. Yeah, I didn't watch it. It was pretty. I, I, I'm, was, a Bischoff, I, I'm a Bischoff fan. It was uh, honestly, it was like it was like they wanted to do an Attitude Era segment, but it was poorly done. I mean, I, I guess maybe because of the COVID, they didn't want to have a bunch of people out there. But like to do a wedding segment where there's no one in the ring was kind of stupid well wedding segments never go well in wrestling for the most part I, and see, um, i disagree the one they did in nxt yeah well, that's, that's was the last fantastic one that yes. went well 
But they can't even use red for the bath anymore. They got to use black goo. Yeah, it looked like goo. It looked like I took a Vince Russo on Ms. Yeah. Maurice. <laughs> but I mentioned it when we started. I said we could talk about Raw. We could talk about NXT. We can talk about uh, AEW. But we're going to talk about a year in review, basically by naming our awards. But we're going to we, to make sense of it. This is the first segment, and the the response Ray I got from Doc and CJ was, well, "Who gives a fuck about beer if he's coming or not?" And then uh, on the sexual in, innuendo, of course. The the only thing that I found comical about it is that they did the send beer thing. Well, let me, get to that. Yeah. Send let, me, let me get to the next slide since you're always <laughs> ahead of the game here, Ray. You're always you're always ahead of the game, buddy. Uh, that was the third part is they they uh, and I, well, my comment was kudos to the WWE social media guy, because how else to get people talking is to take one of the most. The, what everyone's talking about now is hook the send hook send thing hook, and bring yeah. send veer. Go ahead, Ray, yeah, give but, me your thoughts uh, on it. I mean, they're they're two totally different. It's two totally different things. Like Veer Mahan, not only has been on WWE TV for the last year, yeah, yeah. Veer Mahal's lackey. He's still wrestling. If you bother to watch main event, he had a main event match two weeks ago versus T Bar, uh, which I don't watch it. I just happened to see that in the results that that was there. So yeah. I mean, like. It, it, it's totally the tale of two companies. And it's something we talk about all the time about AEW's philosophy on stuff versus, and even impacts uh, philosophy on stuff versus WWE. AEW not, just showed you perfectly how to debut a new star and make yeah. them a big deal right off the bat. Yep. Hook's never had a match. Hook, I think they should change it to Veer Mahan coming in raw. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what Super just, Nacho alluded to here. He's probably he's home. The, de some yeah, the debut well. of Hook was done masterfully, and yeah. you know, obviously, Avir Mahan. I haven't seen anything that impressed me. I haven't seen anything that I hate. I haven't seen enough to care. Uh, so, I don't yeah, care that's, that's to see. They're trying to build hype to something that's not yeah. really going to be hype. So I don't, it's not really even worth talking. But this is worth talking about, and it just broke the other day. Um, released, quit, whatever you want to call it. Tony Storm no longer with WWE. Freed. Yeah, freed. So, Doc, what do you think about Tony? Uh, we talked a little bit about it beforehand, prepping for this. So, what do you think about the release of Tony Storm or quitting, as you put it? I mean, I mean, the bottom line is she asked for her release, you know, and there's many speculations. You know, you're going to read them left and right. You know, rumor was that, you know, uh, thank you, LS. Sasha and uh, Flair went ahead and pretty much stiffed her through the match and then number two she wasn't really happy that she was burned yeah. out she wanted yep. to go with juice uh in um japan yeah is that, is that i mean there's so many things you can speculate but the only person that really knows is the woman that we're looking at right now yeah and um from you know right off the bat as people started saying she's gone from wwe so people were saying oh she's got fired here comes a bunch more releases and this right. and that but the story was and i think sean ross sat broke it too that once he got some more information that um she wasn't happy and she was burnt out and it's it's i don't know it's it's very weird to uh, well, let me give a shout out to some new people here mcbride is in the building well, mcbizzle uh, is that my big throat friend <laughs> it's our yeah, our brother from another mother and the LS crew. So I mean, it's it's one of those things. Uh, and and I mentioned to you guys that I read earlier she was chasing the twenty four seven title on the yeah. last uh, dark. I, I mean the last. Uh, uh, that's house like show. the that's like the pre release prerequisite. <laughs> I mean, it, my take on it is whatever her reasoning behind it. Good for her because they weren't doing shit with her, and she's a hell of that's, a fucking worker. Yeah, that's kind of my point. Is is this block <laughs> from the get go? If you watch WWE. UK, yeah, she was a huge deal having great matches. Mm -hmm. You hope that when she came to you know, uh, NXT here in the US, that we were going to see the similar thing. And honestly, it started that way until right. the very end of NXT, beginning of NXT 2.0, where she was kind of lost in the shuffle and then moved yep. to the main roster. Mm -hmm. And they've totally botched the main roster. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you see this with a lot of wrestlers that come from the UK because. I mean, WWE is farming them in the UK. They're from the UK. They wrestle there. And then they're making them uproot, move to Florida. And when you're in NXT, you're not actually a performer. You're a trainee still. You're training four days a week yeah. and wrestling one day a week right now. So it's not like she was flying back and forth and could go home and could. Right. You know what I mean? Keep that. I mean, she had a day job, essentially, in addition to being you know, before yeah. being caught up to the main roster. So yeah. that's a hard adjustment for anybody to take. And then plus, if you feel like your talent's being wasted, 
And Maybe. I'm sure they didn't give her a big well, money contract. Pies in the face her. and all this crap. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The pies. It's, it's fucking it's, ridiculous, you know, man. Comedic. And I mean, from what I've seen before, like Ray was saying, in, in the UK, she was great on the mic. She's a great worker. I mean, she even lost some weight recently because I, I heard rumors that they weren't really happy. With, and I think she's fine. She she's looks fine. fucking say, she phenomenal. Had, she had quite a dump truck on her. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Dump I ain't complaining about that. And that's, that. that's the thing, too. To clear it up, Miles, she asked for her release. It wasn't a firing yeah. or a yeah. part of a mass release she asked for her release and now you know we wish, obviously wish her the best and everything and I'm, yeah. i think she'll we'll do see her far again. better I was, I was out of she's, wwe she's a good enough talent that she's going to show up <laughs> yeah. somewhere else juice will obviously works new japan which is her significant other yep uh he's been working impact tapings as well so yep. we could definitely see her on impact once her 90 day no or non competes up uh, i but yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I was going to say, but she wasn't in NXT. She was main roster. So. Yeah, she got ro- yeah. made roster, She's, which means that 90 days She gets may attached. still have a 30-day. It you're depends right. on if her contract was changed, because NXT Superstars had a 30-day. Yeah. Main roster had a 90-day. I don't know if they changed her. I know there was... I would think after the screw-up with Alistair Black, they probably... She's probably 90 day And got but, everybody coming up to sign immediately. Yep. Shout out to Jamar Games in the chat as well. Good to see everybody. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up and share this out. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna get right into the year end awards. Uh, we got Let's ten of them, and of course, we're gonna do it ass backwards. Normally, wrestler of the year is last, but we're gonna do it first. Why not? Why would we do everything like anybody else? Yeah, right? You gotta be uh, different. Yeah. Well, we got that nailed. That's true. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Got to want to be different. All right. Let's go on right to uh, make some. Uh, we did make some sense. Two cents. Our two cents, people. So before we get into the 10 different uh, segments, we are going to hand it over to Doc and Bodie to show off some of the Christmas presents, right? Yeah, a little bit. This is uh, what the AEW wrestling buddies are like. They're kind of of tiny, but they're fun. I didn't know they talked. Yeah, they talk a little bit. Hold on. You know what else is tiny? Yeah, yeah, I know. And then... But we're going to do a Toy of the Week uh, style thing with Doc and Bodie, too, where because uh, they have a hell of a collection. We shared it uh, on the last uh, Legion of Dork, where just going down those steps is just nothing but damn figures, which is very impressive. I didn't give you permission. No, I'm just checking with you. Um, anyways. <laughs> years and years so, of us searching every Walmart, Toys R Us. Yeah, Ray, Ray, my, our boy Keith, our, our boy Cracker Keith Fuller, and of course Bizzle helped me with a bunch oh, up back Keith, in the day. I haven't heard that. That used to be yeah, a fun thing. To I remember do. Keith. You get drunk and then you go to the twenty-four hour Walmart. I'd be like, Ray, let's Kids go. Kids today let's don't go. understand about yeah. how everything was twenty-four hours back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's how I used to beat Dolphy to the toys. I'd go like two but, or three in the morning. But anyways, before, before he gets into oh. the toys, I do want to plug my the Legion of Dork podcast. The next one is going to be '80s Saturday morning cartoons, and Super oh, Nacho and dude, I will be yes. will be doing that one. And we've already found fifty-eight different Saturday morning cartoons to cover. Oh, so I might have to hop fun. on that one. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to try to change the time. We were doing Mondays after Raw. That's but it's pretty late. Said. And. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going in raw yep and uh but tuesday have people working we're gonna try to find a time maybe on a saturday to uh, raw dog and some random to do that as well all right let's uh, doc let's see what you got all right so me and buddy toy the toy, the toy. Rats yeah, and stats. we're gonna be doing uh we're gonna be doing this we're each pick a figure let's talk about it for two seconds this one here is my favorite so far one of my favorites i wanted to give the wwe just a little bit of love this damian priest figure is amazing it's the elite Comes with two hands. Also comes with a necklace, which my kid conveniently lost already. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, amazing work. Tattoos are good. The vest. I always look at the face first, and that's a hell of a right. really good likeness. Yeah. Some of them look like that's pretty. But that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Now it's time for a boat. Bring your figure in, and now it's time for. Has he had any but... fights recently? Has he wrestled any fights? Yeah, he actually just uh, had Wardlow versus Rowdy. Rowdy no, Piper. he met actual. No, wrestling, I mean oh. Bodie's wrestling. Bodie's wrestling is actually off right now for Christmas, New Year's oh, okay. break. So when he gets back, we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully he gets another pin, but, you know, he did really well. Actually, I thought you meant, like, fantasy booking. Uh, Bodie just, just had in a steel cage Wardlow versus Rowdy Roddy Piper, oh, and he cool. put Wardlow over. Well, right now he got to. That's How many power bombs did he hit? I think he hit, like, two or three. I don't really know. <laughs> to get the watch the match, but I will five. say this about that little guy right there. When we opened up all his action figures, he started with Rowdy Roddy Piper, and I said, wow, of all the ones he had, he had every AEW, all the younger. 
And I said, why Rowdy Roddy Piper first? He goes, because he's a legend. So Thank I'll give you. a I'll give the kid credit where credit's due. So presenting my son and his pick of the day, how just to, I'll, I'll help you out here. Oh yeah! So I knew Blaze was gonna flip over this. This was okay. given today by his pappy Doc. It was that delayed awesome. because of you know FedEx being great people that they are. But as you can see, the new AW Sting is actually out. I love Very it. Very awesome. You take the jacket off. He has the long sleeves. Oh. Uh, Scorpion on the tights. Comes with the bat. Yeah, he can't show the saggy boobs. No, he can't show the saggy boobs. I love it. He has the uh, scorpion, scorpion on the dope. back of the jacket. This thing's really well detailed. I was very great. shocked. I thought they were going to do a bad job. But yeah, this is it. The Walmart exclusive is really cool that's coming out. It's half his face and half of Darby's paint, Darby's, if you guys yeah. remember that one. That's going to be that one. Act. And they've already started pushing the Jazz Warriors. They're going to release a three pack with Punk, Punk Darby was, from was, that match where they're all right out. I was just going to ask because I would want yes, like it's all gonna the happen. different faces of Sting, Wolfpack, Surfer, Sting. I would want like one of all so, of them. So, guys, I hate to ask, but if you're picking one, Sting, who, who father or son, who won this one? Sting. I think you right. got this one big time. I do like the on the Damian Good. Priest, but right. Cody's is definitely the shit. Here, take I Darby too. <laughs> Yeah, I showed to Darby. Don't worry, buddy. We're good. <coughs> right, so, so yeah, he he's excited that's, that that's he's getting awesome. a little he's getting a little love here. But yeah, that that those are like I said, this is just a half. You are gonna see more toys. You are gonna see more of these figures presented, which you know Sting definitely. I think Sting won it over big time, which I don't blame him. He is so excited about it. He got actually Sting today, Ty Conti and Wardlow. So. Ooh, Ty Conti. I'd like yeah. to borrow that one. Uh, uh, if you're gonna pull good some gr grandma's that's bullshit, a grandma's no. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's a grandma's bullshit yeah. there. Throw that softball up. I know you guys will knock it out yet, of the park. Which we are going to tape and show on this. I think the reaction. Do you think? I can't believe you, think you came on my mom. I think Brandon you guys K. Know this guy. What's up, Brandon brother? Brandon K's in the building. Wow. Welcome Welcome Hello, here. boss. What's going on? What's up, brother? So it's good to a see legend some right new there, buddy. Uh, seems the words finally getting out to uh, some of the some His of the indie feds Brandon around K, here that we want. That's legendary. Yeah, Brandon <laughs> K is like a Pittsburgh right, Southwestern PA legend, in my opinion. Damn well, right. We're, I said we're interested to know anybody whether you're new or you're just joining the show. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free, and make sure you hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel. Helps get this video out to more people. Share it <laughs> out so we can get a bigger audience because we got big things for the next year as well. Big and things coming, and it's not Veer. <laughs> I was Damn. waiting for all this. All right, bring me awards, please. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and bring we're, yours. we'll get awards going here. And uh, these were from No DQ, uh, where I found six from each. And uh, we want to know you guys in the chat too. Let us know who you think. Sure. And we'll go right down the panel. You guys blast off in the chat, and I'll cover Ray's face up with your uh, comments as well. So we're gonna go ass backwards. Normally, wrestler of the year is last. We're gonna put it first and talk about here are the nominations. You got Bobby Lassie from WWE, Brian Danielson AEW, Drew McIntyre WWE. Adam Hangman Page from AEW, Kenny Omega AEW, and Roman Reigns WWE. And we'll start right below me with CJ Sensation. Who I is mean, your wrestler to you? To me, this is kind of a no-brainer. Just with those names, it's it's got to be Kenny Omega. I mean, who's had better matches this year? I mean, argue argue with me. Anybody, and please. Several world championships. There's no yeah. argument that. Multiple championships, Several world multiple championships. companies. So it's it's got to be Kenny Omega. There's really only three candidates here, and you can make an argument for any three of them. I'm going to go opposite of you since you picked Kenny. Yeah. And I don't know how you could pick anybody other than Danielson. He main evented WrestleMania in an excellent three-way match. True. He's come to AEW, had the 30-minute Iron Man match with Omega. The 60-minute Iron Man match that wasn't an Iron Man match, but went to a, you know the draw with Paige. He's had fantastic matches with Cabana and all the other members of the Dark Order. Agreed. Yep, that run was I great. mean, as far as work rate goes, <laughs> I, I just, I mean, Kenny's a close number two. In my opinion, Reigns would be number three. Uh, but Brian Danielson, just, the, and also the fact who can say that they main evented WrestleMania True. and an AEW pay per view in the same year Very as, rare. and had a top match in both companies. I, don't I mean, he's, he's going to be. I'm not saying that there won't be others who can say <laughs> that, but he's definitely the first now. But now that you mentioned that, Ray, I do want to bring up something that I, and if you really think about it and you're watching closely, this isn't really a big surprise, but it was a stat that kind of, you know, over the years, you, you would think would happen every year. 
throughout the entire year of 2021, no WWE champion or Universal champion title has changed hands on a um, on a pay per view scheduled match. Roman Reigns has held it the whole time since uh, August 30th of 2020, and Big E cashed in September 13th. So no pay-per-views had a major title change in WWE all year. So I thought that was a pretty interesting stat. So, Doc, Doc where are you at? Who's your wrestler of the year, bro? Oh, my God. Well, these two kind of hit the on the head because you honest to God, Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson, both of them, matches. Well, you're the tiebreaker, bro. I can't. I can't. I, I actually yeah, want to throw a wrench into this. Somebody. I'm gonna throw a wrench into this, and you guys are gonna hate it. I'm going with Roman Reigns. I'm, 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 I don't hate that. The at reason all. I say that is this: Roman Reigns is doing the best work he has ever done, and yes, no question. You think yeah. about it like this, guys. They were opening up everybody's mouth in WWE. All the fans like put up with a plumber's helper and just shoving Roman Reigns down your throat. Okay. Roman Reigns left for a little while, came back, and look where he's at now. Look what he is doing. Um, there I, is I, I, good. There. No, no, please. I, I was basing mine off of more so than anything the the number of total matches for the year. That's why I'm saying Omega. Yeah. But I mean, well, don't get me wrong. I thought Kenny Omega out of all, all, all that out of that whole lineup has wrestled the best matches of the year. I'll say that, like talent wise, I, entertainment wise. But my God, just the stuff Reigns is doing right now oh, is yeah, just it's, phenomenal. It's, so it's top, I'm gonna go at that because yeah. I think you know all three. You know Reigns. Danielson and Omega. Those were my mm -hmm. three picks, and I was trying to decide, and you guys helped me. So thanks. <laughs> so I mean, I could I could half-ass it and cheat because if I could get specific to me, Kenny Omega first half of the year, Brian Danielson second half of the year. If I could pick two, because yeah. of the I, way I, I, the way it's going, because Tony Omega that. having having three world championships earlier in the year, taking on everything, and he did that injured. Yes, he did that with yes. an injury the whole time. Uh, the Agreed. Roman Reigns, I could definitely see because worldwide he's the most renowned. He has run right. that company basically through the whole time. But at the same time, it's the same shit with him throughout the whole year. No, nothing really big, nothing except for towards the end here now. With and he hasn't thing. had very many matches. It's, it's the my, same shit all year. My thing with Reigns, and, and it, it's almost not his fault because it's a WWE thing, is the work rate. Now, I'm not saying yes. Reigns, Reigns has not worked fantastic matches. He has. In the WWE scope, but as far as like, at least for a wrestling fan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like like we are, you know, that mm -hmm. they care more about the work rate than just the entertainment value. Yeah, how you couldn't say Omega or Danielson had a better year mm -hmm. is insane. And then like to me, that that big thing is, if you take Danielson out of the WrestleMania match, and you had Reigns and Edge, it would have been a decent match. Yeah, but sure. with Danielson in it, that was a fantastic match. And then also leading up to that, he had great matches with Cesaro, with a bunch of other people in WWE, and then jump ship goes babyface to the biggest heel in the company. 90 minutes of televised wrestling in two matches with two of the best, you know, the two other guys on this list. And I'm not knocking Paige, but Paige doesn't do a 60 minute match that good with anybody else. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. 100%. Him and Kenny, after that 30 minute match, I want to see six more hours. Oh, yeah. But Here's the another thing, too. The common denominator in all of those mm. is Brian Danielson. Mm. I got to piggyback off Ray for one second. Yeah. And I mean this with all due respect. Ray said, you know, Ray mentioned that WrestleMania match. If you think about it, when they first threw Daniel Bryan into the mix, they said, okay, Daniel Bryan could take the pin. That way, Edge, you know, still has his impact. Rain still has his impact. Whoever you know loses, you know doesn't look that bad because Daniel could take the pin. No, what happened was, what did Reigns do? He put them both down and pinned yeah. them both, True. and that's I think solidified such a, you know such a heat. That, that's a heel. big moment. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge moment just for the fact that, and there's even a T-shirt made with both of them laying yeah. there and him just like. I thought right there, I was like, that's what kind of got me going with the rest of the year and why picking him because my God, just like just stuff like that, that impact. And now the stuff that what's with Heyman and, and Brock and everything, it, it's keeping you interested. interested. It's yep. keeping you invested. And that's the big thing about wrestling is keeping them invested. Same thing with Danielson with and you. Omega. They keep yeah. you invested. Mm -hmm. The, the other bottom line is, though, you have CJ with Omega. You yep. have you with Roman. You have me with Danielson, which leaves it all on Blaze. Who is the Wrestle Sense Wrestler of the Year? Well, like I said, I, I would. You can't I, pick two. I, I would. I no wanted to split it because half. of the two. Um, what Kenny Omega did in the beginning of the year with an injury, holding all those championships, is so hard to go against. But uh, there is so much saying 
to what Brian Danielson did without a world championship the whole year. Like you guys are saying, no one's ever going from one company in the main event of WrestleMania and then doing what he's doing, main eventing all these you other. You got to pick one, bro. Yeah, so you're I'm, with, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Around. I'm going to go with Brian Danielson because of what he done overall in the for the year. And I got, I got I Roman history. Reigns could definitely have it. And Kenny Omega with what he did injured um, is huge. And having three different titles, being the belt collector, as it were, be. You I really want to make this interesting? That's one for the bruiser. Bodie. Yeah. Do you want me to bring in a seven-year-old? See what he says? Sure. No. sure. While you're bringing him no, in. No, the... it's up to you guys. No, the... B- Bodie will have to be our, if, if we're really locked up two to two tiebreaker. Yeah. Let's not, the... let's not use it. I would the like other... to see his opinion in this, but, part. you know, whatever. The it's other cool. I'd love to see his opinion. his opinion, but. We can see what his opinion is. You sure? I'm just yeah. saying right now, not right now we have a winner. Come here. Yeah, is. that'll be All right, the, right now is the winner, but I, 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 mean, I don't know. I'm interested. I think the Kelvin fans are interested. House. Come here for a minute. See you. We're picking so the, other the 2021 has, wrestler the other name of the year. Been thrown Pick in one. Is Josh Who do you Alexander think? Has been thrown in there as well. I didn't see the list. Hold on. There's the list, buddy. Who do you think out of Let's all those Kel guys right there, who do you think should wrestler of the year be? And no, you can't use Darby Allen. Brian Danielson. Okay. Yeah, well, it's... It's, it's there you go. I mean, agree to disagree. So yeah. I mean, he's and like I said, he Josh Alexander he's was undefeated. Some, he was getting some votes for what he did uh this year as well. And obviously not rest of the year, but definitely a good year for him. So. Oh, absolutely. You pr- you proud uncle right now? Didn't yeah. watch it enough right. to to really, really <laughs> judge on that. But let's I mean, go it's, to it's one of those things too, like even like in PWI's rankings and stuff like that, it's always gonna be somebody from one of the top two major companies. Yeah, that's and that's why mo- that's why most seen. that's why these lists are mostly AEW and WWE, and these are in alphabetical <laughs> order. They're not in rankings or anything. So, chat, let us know who your female wrestlers are, and we'll go bottom to top here. Ray first, Britt Baker. It's this all about Britsburg. She went con- from she went from a damn near unknown to a pillar of the company to one of I mean the most talked about women's match this year yep. Yep. isn't Becky Lynch. In 30 seconds, squashing Bianca Belair. No. It, I mean, you could talk about the Becky and, and Charlotte feud that was all over the internet because they hated each other or whatever, but the match didn't live up to any hype whatsoever. The most talked about women's angle this year, the most over women's angle this year, was Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. Agreed. And you got to take it to Britt. There's a New Japan uh, great vote promos. there. I mean, it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could argue, you know, that Bianca Belair's title win was pretty iconic, but overall, yes. I would say Britt easily too. The CJ, match her Doc, and Banks had at WrestleMania BJ? was fantastic. Uh, yeah. we'll I mean, Doc obviously, obviously, I'm I'm partial, so this is a no brainer. I mean, Britt Baker, but I would give Bianca a, a nice run. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, BK, you're right. Looks like a consensus. We got a couple other ones here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Becky was gone half the year, so how could she be the female of the year? Yep. True, true. So this one, Doc, you can make it a consensus. or you, you could just be, hop uh... on this train, son. <laughs> uh, I was already on the train when the list popped up. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely Britt Baker, hands down. I mean, you yeah. think about it, man. Hands for hand, hand, hand by hand, she is the top heel yeah. of this business. Not just I wouldn't say AEW. top heel. Top but... heel, top female no. heel of this business. Pardon me. No. No? Okay, well, who, who, she, who, who beats her in top female? She gets cheered a lot more than I was going to say, it's not that she's not a great heel. Oh, I she's a great she's heel. People love her, territory where She's in that stone-cold type mentality. Yeah, where she's yeah. a cool heel, and a lot of people love her, yeah. even though she's supposed to be the heel. Right. And that. Okay. All right, hold on. Britt Baker. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's 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 look here, didn't even influence him. Didn't even whisper in his ear. Rebecca, okay, that's what everybody else has voted for. Lays, right. I mean, I still oh, want to know Brit. what you thought. It's Brit. It's definitely okay. Brit. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> census has spoken. He just moved on. So. It's definitely Brit by far, by far, which he's done. Yeah, he already and, knew. And she's still going to do. So we'll start uh, with me and go down on this one for tag team of the year. Um, we got FTR with AEW, Jurassic Express. Lucha Brothers, RK Bro, The Usos, and The Young Bucks. And I don't know. I have a weird feeling this one might be a consensus, too, because it's, it it's not only what they've done in the past. It's what they're doing now and not only holding just AEW championships, but the triple A's as well. FTR. CJ? FTR. It's Doc? not even a question. Lucha Brothers. Good call. Ray? I can see where Doc is with yeah. the Lucha Brothers. They've had fantastic matches. The match with The Young Bucks. 
they had in the cage was, I mean, probably we'll talk about match of the year. Match of the year. We'll talk about match of the year. The body of work, the the character work, the in ring work. God damn it, if it ain't a work, but it's FTR. Yeah, you know what else though? Best tag team in the world today. So, all right, Bodie, pick your tag team of the year out of that list. Jurassic Express. Okay, right, Brody's go. going. Brody's going Jurassic Express. He's going lucha. with the dinosaur. We got lucha. A lot of luchas in the chat. Here's the thing. What I would say with the luchas is they could be singles and go far as well. Oh, FDR, yeah, I don't sure. know as much, but you split up the Lucha Brothers and they can get world title runs just about anywhere. They're that damn good. The reason I picked Lucha Brothers is they had such, I mean, my God, the matches with, with the Young Bucks in the cage. I thought I'm that was phenomenal when they, when, when they captured the belts. And then the, the stuff with FTR now is just classic and it's just amazing. True. And now they're building this program with Jurassic Express. I, yeah. I I just love the Lucha Brothers, man. I, I'm a huge Lucha Brothers, Mark, and I'm just gonna have to do. Well, they're super not I appreciate what heat. you're saying, but I want to make one point to you. Peanut butter and jelly. Can is you his tell team. me a tag team that has been mentioned on four four major company shows this year? That's right, ROH. As FTR. Well. Five, FTR. Five, FTR. FTR. Yeah, ROH. It's been FTR. It has been. Yeah. And the there's Frisco others good, but still. ROH. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go opposite of you. I have to go. That's I'm gonna right. go with Lucha Bros. Since the rest of you picked FTR. They even got a WWE mention from Edge, even though it was all by their shoot name. Yeah, oh, true. yeah. true, true. <laughs> that is right. But uh, tag team of the year, we got a lot of different. Uh, who's this? The dangerous techers of New, new I, Japan. See, I'm not Pro in New wrestling. Japan. I, yeah. I, unfortunately, Andrew, Andy, the, Andrew's big in uh, New yeah. Japan. Unfortunately, the only New Japan shows he I usually works for them. watch <laughs> is is Wrestle Kingdom. And, you know, some spots here and there. But unfortunately, I just don't watch New Japan enough to for that There's not enough time to watch for. all the wrestling that's out there anymore. <laughs> it's hard to watch even just the, the main four companies. All right. So we're going to start with Doc on this one. The stable, stable of, of the, the year. year. Oh, the boy. bloodline in WWE, Dark Order Woo. in AEW, the elite of AEW, the Hurt Business, Inner Circle, and the Pinnacle. Doc and Bodie will go first. I'm going to go with... The inner circle, guys. I think the inner circle is just this year has just been amazing. I love the fact that they went from heel to face and like just in the change of uh, like a change of underwear. That's how crazy yeah. it was. That's how fast it was. But the simple fact is, when they were heels, people were loving them too. Yeah, I know that's kind of not the job of the heel, but I mean, when you can't help not to be loved, you know, that's what it is. I love the inner circle. That's who I'm going with. Okay, good call, Gray. Okay, I'm I'm gonna jump. Uh, you guys know I'm, I'm pro AEW big time right here. I love the inner circle. I love the pinnacle. My only problem with them being stable of the year is it's a great thing the way AEW books them where they go apart and come back together so frequently and like you have storylines apart and together. Um, but that's the issue with to me for inner circle and pinnacle is that they're not a cohesive unit every week. Sure. Literally 2021 was dominated SmackDown was nothing without the bloodline. At whenever Jimmy and Jay had their kind of maybe we're going to turn, maybe we're not, um, you know, Paul Heyman being the, the, the mouthpiece of the champion, literally without the bloodline, there is no SmackDown. I mean, personally, I fast forward through 90% of SmackDown and only watch a few segments of other wrestlers and whatever the bloodline's doing, because that's what the show's centered around. Paul, so you're fired. I, I think yeah. that has to be for me, the stable of the year, because without them, the show shit. Yep. Okay. CJ, CJ sensation. Um, I agree with what both doc and Ray said, but I, I'm going to go inner circle. Okay. Right. Good call. Blaze. Um, it's tough, man, because if you look back at the elite, whenever they had the belts and the Bucks and Kenny had them and, you know, what they're doing in AEW, look at if I want to go one of my favorites, I, I love the evolution of the Dark Order this year. Um, the, the Inner Circle, I, I'm big fans of them, too, because I'm a huge Jericho mark. Pinnacle, a little bit of a throwback with what they're doing as well. But like Ray said, Inner Circle and Pinnacle were never like a, a solid unit the whole year. The elite has been, you know, up and down throughout as well. Her business, I wouldn't even consider in this list right. because they didn't even make it the whole year. Ugh. So I'm going to go bloodline as well. I'm okay. gonna, like Ray Bodie said, they, the they, okay. they, 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 they definitely controlled the whole year. Okay, I'm not going to tell Bodie who's tied between. I'm just going to let him go with it. Okay. Yeah. Just like he did with his Jurassic Express pick, because that, that was out of the water. But let's see. So, 
Bodie, stable of the year. You got him right there. Who do you think it is? You're going to be shocked about this. I'm going all elite, baby. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we have uh, a bloodline like and it. inner circle inner tie circle for tie. stable of the year. Yeah. And, and I think respectively a heel too. <laughs> yeah, I like it though. I like it. Good to see you, Gregory. Blankley. And he even said Bebe afterwards. That 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 got me. All right. Pillar to post. Big shout out to Pete. More <laughs> oh, Cana- we got more Canadian contingent here and Firestar in the house as well from the West Coast out there in California. Great to see everybody as we continue. We're just gonna go right down the line. Stable. We're going ass backwards, as I said before. And uh next up, I think we touched base on some of these already. But this one's this one's a little uh, the toughest one is coming up later on. Match of the year. And if you have one that you want to add, there's other you, you can probably yeah, add. So here. Edge versus Rollins, Hell in a Cell. Great match. Oh, I'll go ahead and pick mine as I announce them. Omega versus Danielson on Dynamite. The only one that's not on a pay-per-view was a regular free match. Omega Page at full gear. Reigns versus Edge, WrestleMania. Walter Dragonoff, which was TakeOver 36. And the Young Bucks, Lucha Bros, all out. That tag match would definitely be tag match of the year if we had a tag match of the year. That cage match was sick, and that's what I love about the brutality. Edge and Rollins was a great match, too, because I didn't think Crown Jewel was going to be any good based on the past Crown Jewels. It was pretty damn good. Um, Edge and Reigns was not bad either, but I have to go with the brutality and just the, the from start to finish – Definitely my and I would throw um Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa's match up in this list if there was a women's match of the year that would definitely get it. I'm going Walter, Dragonoff, and XT. CJ. Uh mine's not on here, so um I'm you going can, Christian. You can I'm going Christian Omega from the first rampage in Pittsburgh for the sheer fact it's that that match. crowd yeah. was fucking insane. And me being there live. We were they, there, so that yeah, helps. Too. I, well, <laughs> All four of us were there. No, oh, no, I we was were there Rampage. for dynamite. We were there for dynamite. Yeah. Oh, it I, I was just, a great match, though. Yeah. It, just it, being definitely. there, the electricity. I don't know how it came across on TV because I don't think I actually ever went back and watched it. But yeah, it was it was insane. Edge, Edge Rollins. We got some Dragon Offs. We got some Lucha Buck. Lucha Bucks. We got a little bit of everything. Ray, do you uh, mind going next? Because I am still. Riley I'm, I'm, t- I'm caught between there. two, man. All right, Ray. Uh, I have two matches that are not on here that I would put up into the mix, which would be Danielson and Page, because I feel like that was a making performance for Page. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, just came out before that match, honestly. Uh, yeah, and then I would have put, obviously, uh, Thunder Rosa and Britt on here, because, uh, yeah. again, that caused such a stir. But of the matches listed there, um, I love the Dragon Off and Walter match. I mean, the brutality of that was ridiculous. Obviously, and Omega and Danielson were fantastic. Omega and Paige had an awesome following. And then when you take into account the injury, I mean, that's a, an amazing match. But yeah. as far as sheer work rate and, like, pulling me out of my seat and saying, holy shit, numerous times, I'm going Bucks and Lucha. I mean, okay. that match was fantastic from start to finish. No downtime. Agreed. The fact that they worked that rate for 30 minutes – was ridiculous. Um, and I mean, like I said, there, there's so many that are so close right there. And I yeah. love the Walter dragon off just, how, but they beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. That's yeah. why I didn't like it. I mean, so, I liked it, but, no, here's, but that, that, that's my problem with the match yeah. is that, that there was not as much of the psychology and the storytelling right. in that match, yeah. but the bucks, even between what you want to call a spot monkey, right. You know, match, they True. still told a hell of a story through injuries and everything in that match. So, like, is is an overall thing. Uh, that's got to be my match. So, before Bodie goes, I got to welcome. You know, uh, CJ's been seeing some doctors right now, but this is a doctor you might not want to see. Doctor Anus Tickler is here. Oh yeah, Jesus, good old Joey. That is our yeah. boy Joey. He is the eccentric one. He's the filthy Quinn. Uh, good to see you, Joey. He always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And, you always and, and Riley frosty. Wolf is in the building as well. Riley Wolf in the house as well. So, all right, Bodie. All right, buddy, we're going to let you go. What match do you think is match of the year? Or you can, if it's not on there, you could yeah. say your own. What do you think it is? I think it's Omega versus Danielson. Okay. Love it. All right. You like the Omega C- versus CJ, Danielson? What did you say again, CJ? I said Christian and Omega from the first rampage in Pittsburgh. 
Okay, so we don't have a winner. We have a bunch of great matches well, all year. Yeah, I didn't even get the pick. Oh, oh yeah, my bad. Doc, Doc, Doc. Still, Doc could still consensus it here. <sighs> I was. I I'm... thought you were giving your pick to Bodie. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> he wanted to pick his own. So I, yeah, you know what? I really liked Walter and Dragon. I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Walter fight uh, Champa this year too? Or was that last year? And, and that's a good point, no Drum idea. Monkey. No crowd there, you know, back in, in the old sickness times. So. Yeah, no crowd. And that but I'm gonna, my point of saying, why beat the fuck out of each other? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, I, Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers to, to just tore, tore the house down it all out. And that was my fate because I was right next to Ray when this happened. I mean, we were up on our seats like, oh, my God. So I'm going out. to go with that one. Okay, that's going to be the consensus for here then. So we got the... The tag team match of the year is also the match of the year as far as this channel is concerned. And it's good to have more than two or three that people like. It just shows we had a great year. In oh, progress. yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely. And like I said, we could throw a women's match of the year up there, definitely with Thunder Rosa. And, I wouldn't um, differentiate the women from the men. Brit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So, I, like I said, I just grabbed the six that were from No DQ, and it wasn't on the list, but I would definitely add it. So, now this one, uh, we'll start with Ray and go up. I don't even have – I don't even know which one I'm going to pick. Go ahead, Ray. Well, Double or Nothing was Cole and Brian, right? Or was that all out? Cole, Brian, Ruby. Yeah, it's Double or Nothing without question, dude. That yeah. that pay-per-view, from start to finish, the in-ring work, the matches were fantastic. But to have those three debuts and, like, like – even after Cole, you're like, man, this was a great pay-per-view. And then to hear Flight of the Valkyries, you're just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we watched that in a group. We were actually at Doc's house. We had a bunch of friends with us. And, like, dude, you would have thought it was Attitude Era and we were 14 years old the way we talked. <laughs> yeah. And to me, like, that's what – yes, the matches need to be great all around. There's no question about that. But – to me, that feeling, if you can emote that feeling out of somebody as jaded and as, you know, seasoned as we are, if you want to call it that, because, I mean, we've we've been watching wrestling. We're all, you know, I'm 39, Doc's in his 40s. We've been watching wrestling our whole life. Yep. And to make us pop and feel like we're 12 years old again, yeah. kudos. Just, you know. Mm -hmm. Golf class. That's, that's a good point, Riley, as well. And that's what I said about Crown Joe earlier. I wasn't really yeah. sure, but uh, we'll go with Doc next. Double or nothing. Ray did all the answering for me. <laughs> I mean, that's Easy all there is to it. We were at the same building, same place, you know, same spot. So, yeah, double or nothing, definitely, especially with Cole and Danielson at the end. I mean, just the fact that they had Cole come out and you thought that was it. Big super kick, the, the you know, the kiss. And I was like, okay, there, here we go. And then here come Danielson. It was just like, Plus, you had first, the first match. They spoiled us. Fast. I was I was going to wait. If you didn't say it, I was going to. Yeah, I mean, that was Punk's first match yeah. as well. So. Against so Darby. The Lucha I watched Brothers. the child cry. Yeah. It, it was it was something else. I did not was great. cry. Okay, you were, you were slightly moping. <laughs> <laughs> there was a tear in your eye, boy. Yeah, yeah. Ray even said, Uncle Ray said, there was a tear in your eye. Even though you, you liked them both. You said, there was I a know, tear in my beer crying for Darby, <laughs> dear. I don't worry about it. MGF's going to give Punk his first loss anyway. It'll be cool. All right. Can I go? Yes, no, sir. No, we won't. <laughs> double or nothing. Double or nothing. All right. So we got three for double or nothing. So Blaze, Blaze? It doesn't matter what you think. All right. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to run them down real quick because it's tough for me because uh, I got reasons for both. Uh, double or nothing. All Out was before double or nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. Was it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so in double or nothing, you had Serena Deeb over Riho, Hangman Page over Brian Cage. The Bucks uh, over oh, right. Moxley and Kingston, Jungle Boy over Christian Cage, Cody over Agogo, Miro over Lance Archer, Britt Baker over Sheeta, Darby and Sting over Page and Sky, Omega over Cassidy, Omega defeated Cassidy and Pop via pinfall, and Inner Circle uh, defeated the Pinnacle. Now, all out. Uh, Orange Cassidy, there was a buy in with Orange Cassidy, Taylor, Wheeler, Yuta, Jurassic Express, Virtues, uh, TH2 with Private Party, Matt Hardy, Miro, Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, Kojima, Britt Baker, Statlander, Young Bucks, and Lucha Brother Cage match, where we just voted for match of the year, the Casino Women's Battle Royal, Chris Jericho versus MJF, Punk versus Darby Allen, Paul White versus QT Marshall, and Omega versus Christian Cage. I'm actually going to go all out because to me, even though Double or Nothing was a great show, too, and there's a lot of iconic parts, I think All Out to me was like 
now AEW is here. They they can definitely put on huge shows. It's going to be even bigger and better. So it really hooked me in. Hook pun there, I guess, if you want to say it. Um, with All Out. So I'm going to go All Out. All right. Well, you still lose. All right. Hold on. You, you, should we... I'm not going to change my opinion because two pick, people pick All something right. different. Hold on, hold on. Well, that's Good what I buddy. did with the Lucha Brothers and, you know, everybody FTR. Okay, <laughs> so pay-per-view of the year, my friend, or my, my, my son. What do, you, who, what do you think? Double or nothing. Exactly. All right. There you go. So double or nothing will win I, uh, I, pay-per-view of the year. I, I just want to compliment my nephew for such good taste. <laughs> all categories but one, he has agreed with me without knowing. And as we mentioned, too, I'll give Crown Jewel a big a big kudo for not being It was better than I thought it was going yeah. to be. Yeah. Me, too. Sure. It was definitely better. For me, those shows are never going to be the best of the year just because of the crowd response. Like, yes, the Saudi crowd is, is excited about it, but they don't bring the kind of energy that yeah. You know, even a ten thousand seat arena in the state. They're excited. Just, right. You could you could put mid card matches there in one main event, and they'd still pop through it because they don't get it. They don't get those shows over there. Yeah. So, and good for them. But it was a lot better than the past. Oh, what? Sure. However many crown jewels there were. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When the highlight of a Saudi show is Titus falling under the ring, yeah. <laughs> you got a lot to live up to, and this last one did live up to that. So, announcer of the year, we're going to start with our resident announcer, Doc, on this one. We got what Corey the Graves. fuck. Corey Graves in WWE. You're not on the Exc- list. You didn't qualify. Excalibur, AEW, Ross in WWE, Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, and Tony Schiavone. Schiavone. I'm right, gonna Doc. go. I'm gonna go. Pat McAfee. He yeah. he is so entertaining on SmackDown. It's unreal. And um, I know he gets on some people's nerves, but I think he really brings a lot of flavor to that uh, commentary table. And just I would love to have a host like him. Don't get me wrong. I got some. Great people beside me in church, and and I'll even say it, even though he's a prick, Tony Kincaid, who's getting married this yeah. weekend, by the way. <laughs> okay. But what I'm saying, see, I put him over for once. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is, he doesn't get to hear it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll fuck him. But what I'm saying is, Pat McAfee, though, definitely, you know, mm-hmm. I did say, even though Jim Ross did defeat cancer, God bless. I'm happy yeah, you're back, like Jimmy. You. But yeah, Pat McAfee, hands down. CJ, your pick. Um. Uh, so here, here's my thoughts. I mean, for anybody to say anyone other than Jim Ross, it's crazy. But I mean, with that being said, I'm going to go off the spectrum. And again, I'm partial just because I like his style of commentary. I got to go with Corey Graves. All right, you know? Corey Graves. And we're going to let Ray go last. I'm going to take my pick. And, uh, I, I've always liked Corey, um, Ross and Shivani are I'm a huge Shivani Mark just to hear yeah. him back again takes me back 30 years of wrestling so I love Shivani all the time Ross is a legend but everyone can definitely say and know he lost a little step but his his points are still great his iconic like we talked about um in uh the draw match where they went outside and they were back in we needed a commentator to tell the story mm-hmm. that they were checking on him instead of doing the 10 count ross would have definitely done that right so it was missing that i'm not i was never really a michael cole fan he's just pretty much the same the fact that he's new and brash and I, as much as i hate his shins game nakamura dancing on love the it. table bullshit love it um Me i'm gonna too, go with it. pat mcafee as well ray all right Corey, you don't return phone calls for three weeks at a time, so you're an asshole, but I still love you. Uh, and he's fantastic on commentary. I, I do. I've always loved Corey. I do, however, think that he's being muted, um, censored, if you want to call it, in WWE oh, sure. on the main roster. Fuck you, Riley uh, Wolf. I saw it, too. He, uh, I put WWE wait. in part of Jim Ross. Instead Who cares of, uh, what a Wish version of Conor McGregor thinks? Keep going. Uh, Go ahead, I Ray. care. Well, I mean, if, if you if you really want to get technical, Jim Ross is the only man to close two shows for two companies because he did say thank you for joining us on Raw, yeah, on WWE, right. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I think Corey's being handcuffed a little bit by WWE. Sure. Um, he could be what, the best heel commentator in the game if they turn, turned him loose. I, I love his calibers that. points. Um, he does get lost at times. Everybody said everything great about Jim, and I agree with it, even lost a step. As yeah. long as he falls back into that role of analyst and doesn't try to be play-by-play, mm-hmm. I think Good he point. can keep doing this forever. Oh, for sure. I'm not a Cole fan. I, I can't lie. I don't hate him or anything like that. I just – to it's me, he sounds like every stale. WWE yeah. announcer. Yeah, you know, you could replace him, Big Joseph, 
who was the who was the dick pic guy? I don't even remember his name now. Uh, uh, Brad Maddox. Re- re- revolving door. No? They, they yeah, I, Brad uh, Maddox. The other one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I love Shivani. <laughs> Brad Maddox. Things, but a legend. Corey Graves also has a title run this year. The he bottom does. Line oh, stop is, it. Though, <laughs> the bottom line is, though, of any commentator on that list, there is one man that has made me not fast forward through matches that I could give a shit less about. And that is Pat freaking McAfee. Yeah. I mean, I'm, he I'm... will turn a shit match True. entertaining. Yeah. Because they let him be him. I agree. And that is a testament to, to WWE doing that, but they need to do that with so many more people. Everybody. They need to let their commentary <laughs> team be themselves. They need to let the wrestlers be themselves. And you will get the kind of shit you get with McAfee this year. Dig it. I mean, he, he roused the crowd up, the videos. The, I love the Shinsuke Nakamura dance. I think so it's freaking I. hilarious. It's my I favorite love... part of SmackDown. When Brock Lesnar threw something at him and McAfee screamed and ran like a girl was hilarious. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, we have a consensus here. That I, I think just... Pat McAfee, in addition to rookie announcer of the year. Yeah, we had exactly. That, was also the announcer of the year just because he created so much more entertainment value. Yeah, we're not biased else. with we're not biased with Corey and Pat Please. with the Pittsburgh boys at all. No, right? yeah. <laughs> guys, I gotta say this real quick. Being an announcer, and I'm looking over at the comments, and I'm just gonna say this about Jr. Okay, I know a lot of people are on him about the simple fact that he did say WWE and say AEW on a broadcast. Yeah, but I want to tell you something. When you say something for over what 19, 20 years, and then yeah. you know you switch to something else, once in a while, shit happens. I mean, b- being an announcer, you know. That happens, especially if you've worked for two or three different companies. Sometimes that things happen. So, you know, lay off JR. Even I mean, without the working for different companies, when you're yeah. doing commentary, uh, obviously Doc does it on a regular basis. I've done it quite a bit. Uh, it's been a while. Doc and I have got to do it together a few times. Hey, now um, you get to do it together. It is all about just thinking on the fly and reacting. And right. you're just reacting. I mean, you, you may have notes about the finish, you know, whose finisher it is and what they call their move set or, right. you know, an antidote that they want you to, to mention in. But everything else is pure reaction, especially especially in AEW more than WWE because they don't have an earpiece and have lines fed to them. It's all about just that quick snap reaction. So for mm-hmm. somebody like Jim Ross, who is elderly, mm-hmm. but also called WWE for 20 plus years, right? for him to have a slip up, who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah I, I know, but people people really ran ragged on Twitter to run ragged now on on here. Me, me it, picking Graves right. over Jr. is just because, in, in my opinion, Thanks, Jr. Walter. is always number one, and that goes without saying. Yeah, but, he's a, yeah. he's iconic. Him and Shivani, like I said, yeah. I love just having them on air now, where we didn't have Absolutely. them for a while. Big shout out to Comrade in the chat and the Natural Alex Wolf. And for most of the people in the chat, you guys are used to me doing commentary with the video game here in the digital world, and you guys hear me two, three times a week, act the fool and do crazy stuff on here, calling the the digital wrestling here. But Doc has done it consistently in multiple indie feds. For if you don't know, and what I like. I'm to- gonna, I'm going to pat his back a little bit as Thanks. much as he hates hates when I do it. But uh, this guy sorry. has done it Thanks. for multiple decades here in the Pittsburgh area for multiple different indie federations. And yeah, I what, respect that a lot. I appreciate you, Blaze. Thank you again. I What I like to do is just because I've done it once or twice because someone brought out the title from another promotion I was in and, and brought it on the other program. I write in real big letters at the top of my paper now what the, you know what what promotion i'm at because it's just True. something i do now it's it, it's good luck yeah. plus what four different I don't ones right doc four well, different ones yeah four different ones right now we'll see so we'll see how easy. we'll see if uh some people so there's been some management changes in some places we'll see if i'm getting kept or not on one or two commentary but, um, though, is like a muscle I, memory thing dude like yeah, people yeah don't understand is. that that it's you know the more you do it like even if you go back and watch during the wwe after wwe fired ross and he was doing the njpw shows Yes. He was on the the American. I'm not going to knock Ross, but those were terrible. He was completely out of place. He was out of sorts. He wasn't like he didn't have his cadence down. He didn't have a slow down. And he's definitely got that back now that he's doing weekly TV with AEW. Well, but uh, again, 20 years in one place, and then you're going to have a slip up. Get real. Are yeah. you interested in your nephew's pick? Yeah, he's ready. Go ahead. Uh, for uh, I have my. I have my first pick in like indies, and that's you. Yeah, there you go. All right. He paid. I'm him to gonna say that. go with Pat McAfee. All right, there you go. So Cody picked Pat McAfee. All right. 
Yeah. Either well, I, I have the mind a, of an I really thought he was going to pick Shivani. <laughs> I don't know smart. why, because we always cheer that Shivani's going to steal uh, Britt Baker from uh, yeah, yes. fr from Adam Cole, baby. Cr so, the Christmas know. shirt was cool, cute too. The Christmas shirt was amazing. So <laughs> I like it. If you have, if you don't follow me on Twitter, there was a picture on Twitter of Shivani dressed as Santa with Britt on his lap and Adam Cole behind him. Smearing. Yeah, I, I want to make that into a shirt. That was fantastic. Ugh. And, oh and but, but a lot of the people in the chat that are, are watching me weekly two or three times and stuff, and I try to bring something different to the table because, like we were talking about Michael Cole, it's pretty much consistent the same stuff, which isn't bad. He's good. But, you know, when I when someone goes to the top to do a superplex, I got to be something different. You want to hear that, and people enjoy that. Uh, when they smash someone on a top turnbuckle, it could say hello to the top turnbuckle, you know, and holy piss in a bottle, holy this. Just saying different <laughs> things to make it fun, make it different. Dude, you can't have your take little catchphrases Cole's, and stuff. Cole's been doing it for what, 20 plus I, years now? I think yeah. almost 30. So <laughs> what there was there were certain times when he was calling three hours of Raw and two hours of SmackDown in the same week. Right. I mean, that. That, you can't take anything away from no, him. He's, no, he's amazing at his job. And that's my point yeah. why I wanted to mention that I want to give respect to each and every one of these. I enjoy Excalibur. A lot of people don't like him. I don't know why. He's very No, smart. I like him a lot. I like Claude. I, I, like um, I would love the, to see Graves and McAfee in AEW. How about it's that? It's the Let's same reason why I, I, I think Corey Graves is good at what he does is the same as Excalibur because both of them actually wrestled and understand. Yeah. Very good point. That, you know, I mean – Having Very someone that's done it being able to call the action, I think it comes a lot easier and smoother. To Ouch. Do. Seems like uh, Pete's gone to Dr. Anus Tickler recently. He's talking about Joey, our buddy. <laughs> well, <laughs> shit. But, yeah, these Next. are all different levels of commentary, too, and I think that's a great list. I don't know if there's anybody else that can be thrown in there from those two companies, really. I think that's the list right there. I mean, I love every one of them. I don't hate any of them. I, I mean, I think Taz yeah. did a hell of a job filling uh, in yeah, for JR point. while JR was that. gone. But and you know I was what? Say, I Monroe did a good job. I, love, yeah, I like Paul White. I like when Big Show started on Dark Elevation. I liked how he was because he got to be more of himself instead of just whatever he was, heel or face. Did he he's disappear? Or is he still there? He's I don't think he's there, there as consistently, he still there? but I yeah, I, I enjoyed his comment. And you also too. could throw Eddie Kingston's name into this, too. Yes, good. I like really good. CM Punk's good, commentary. too. Yeah. The guest shots on Jericho. Jericho. When yeah. they bring yeah. all those guys on, they're great. They're and great. then you could Jericho, drop I think, off might have got Ian Riccoboni. You got I yeah. A lot of other I think guys. Jericho might be uh, doing that later on. Joe Dombrowski. Too. I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, breakout it. wrestler of the year. We got mm. Bianca Belair from WWE. Braun you Breaker, could take almost NXT. off that list. We got Darby Allen AEW. Dante Martin he AEW. almost made it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> and Sammy Guevara. CJ, we know it's not almost, but who is your breakout wrestler of the year? I mean, Jesus. This might shock everybody just for the sheer fact that I am not a big fan of WWE stuff. But, I mean, you got to go with uh, Braun Breaker, I guess. I think if there's one person there doing somewhat of a decent job at building up, it would be him, I'd say. With uh, Bianca coming in a close second. Good shout. Okay. Good shout. Okay, uh, Doc? Um, got man. A lot of different votes here. I like this. Little one, go ahead first. I want you to go. Go ahead. Who do you think is the breakout uh, wrestler of the year out of all these guys? Darby Allen. All right. I knew you knew that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting Darby in there somewhere. He he had yeah. his opportunity, he took it. He's the ultimate opportunist. Um very unpopular opinion. Almost. No, Bianca <laughs> Blair. It's not I'm thinking Bianca there, because I think she just – I mean, she walked into WWE. I was a little bit nervous because you've seen what happens with NXT superstars. When they walk in, it's kind of a curse. But, my God, Bianca went in there and took the company by storm. So, Bianca is my pick. Good, good, good shout. Okay, Ray. Uh, so, I feel like Darby would be last year's. Yeah. I, I mean, he's yeah. continued. Uh, by this point, he's made – yeah, True. Um, I feel like Sammy was on the cusp. It all out. They did the you know the spot where he picked up the pin in the Stadium Stampede match, and then he got the TNT Championship this year. But he's not a cornerstone guy really yet. No. Um, I love the Bianca Belair pick. I I, I want to agree with you guys because you know she was anointed at WrestleMania, beat Belair, but let's be honest. Since Becky Lynch came back and she got 
chump changed it. But Summer is that Slam. her fault? It's not her it's fault. It's not her fault. No, at all. It's but not it's her the, fault. Yeah, but, it's, but still, it's one of those things out? where like I they get wrote you. her for six months and now she's back on the back burner. Right. And then do drop with Braun Breaker. I got to agree with CJ. He's had the least amount of time of all these folks in anything. But from the moment Breaker showed up on camera, you were like, holy shit, this dude's a big deal. Yeah. He, great work. His character comes through. And you could tell that they are building NXT 2.0 around him. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And to me, he's he's the one guy. Like right now, if you push Darby Allen to the world title, it'd be kind of questionable. And if you press Guevara to the world title, it'd be kind of questionable. Yeah. Belair could definitely go back to the end of the oh, championship sure. picture if they would use her right. Yep. Braun Breaker could jump brands right now and challenge Roman Reigns, and it would be over like fucking Rover. Agreed. True. Um, so that's going to be my pick with Bianca in a very close. I mean, we're yeah. talking like 1A, 1B yep. for okay. me. All right. So we got two for Breaker, one for Belair, one for Darby Allen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat, but I'm going to take this title literally. Um, and I'm going to take it breakout of this year. Like some people are saying Darby has been around a little bit. I saw someone mention Brit, but I think for us, she broke out before this year as well. Yeah, yeah. Even sure. though she's ruled this year um, mm-hmm. and she's our, our unanimous women's wrestler of the year. Um, love Dante Martin. Uh, Agreed. I, I love what he's doing, but I hate his persona. He always looks like he's about to cry, but I think he's got a huge <laughs> future. Um, for sure. I like Darby Allen and Sting. I'm a huge Sting mark. I think if you talk about who's going to be bigger in the long run, Braun Breaker definitely yeah. has everything except a great name, which I, I'm hoping I can start <laughs> to forget about it. Yeah. Um, now, despite the 37-second loss or whatever, what Bianca Belair has done, her athleticism, winning the championship, and then coming back after everyone said she's buried, buried, buried. You listen to podcasts. She lost that. A short match and that's all podcasters said was she's buried she's buried she'll never come back don't say anything about it if you do you're not a wrestling fan blah 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 i've heard that so many times but you got to let it play out and people hate to say let it play out and it's yeah. not her fault how she was used in that little period but now they're starting to bring her back up and i think she's gonna she could be women's wrestler of 2022 i'm gonna go with bianca belair cool so that gives us a um, i think ron breaker's gonna end up like another Cena but this is this year. This year he's only had people, bronze only had him half. down people's throat. It, it's gonna backlash. I just have a gut feeling. Oh, oh, I don't okay. know. I, I hope not. Okay. I hope not because I really love the I, sign I, up I, brothers as a kid. I'm, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. Uh, agree. If they keep doing it how they're doing it, there should be no issue. But listen, they uh, always keep doing I hope, how they're I hope doing they it. They do NXT. it better than they did for Reigns. It's not a matter. It's not a matter of what they're doing in NXT. They always do it how they do it in NXT. It's what what are they going to do with him once he comes up? Well, it's not even that in NXT anymore because yeah, but yeah, I feel what you mean. So if he comes up and they use call him it living taller at this point, not but sure. he's got everything. He's the total package, man. Yeah, for not sure. To steal Luger's moniker, but he is. He he has everything except a good name, like I said. But exactly. I'm starting to try to get used to it. I'm trying to, man. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're about done, and we're going to do real quick picks of day one, and we're done. Comeback of the year. Uh, so we got Becky yeah. Lynch, Bros. This is when they came back. Well, I'm not Bros. even talking Bros. about this one. It's CM Punk. Christian Cage. I mean, get get fucking real. John Cena yeah. or Sasha. So we know Ray's taking Punk. Doc. Punk, CM Punk. Punk. There's no, uh, I can't. There's nothing. There. Although I CM love Punk. the new Brock Lesnar. I do things. too. With the pony, but I would call that yeah. comeback of the there's, year. There's a lot of great things on there. Both, I'm a huge yeah. Christian Cage fan, have always been. I'm so happy that he's getting his career back. All he's that impact music, blah, blah, yeah. Punk turned the wrestling world on its ear, broke mm-hmm. a Guinness World all Record. Right. What is it? This is comeback of the year. So basically, all these wrestlers or who came back this year, who do you think had the comeback of the year? Sam Punk because he had the biggest pop. Okay, yeah, CM Punk because he had the biggest. I think pop. I think Cena's the worst one, even though he came back and everything. But yeah, we talked about Punk earlier, and we talked about before that seven years in the making. They kind of teased the shit out of it, so you pretty much knew in Chicago it was going to happen, but it was but still. But they huge. never came right out no. and said it. No, they yeah. didn't. But to start out that show with the CM Punk chance, that's it the was, best. It thing was they so great. Done. It was yeah. so great. We I talked it, about so. it with pay per view of the year and eliciting that response again. I'm a 39 year old man and I jumped up like a little fucking kid. Like, yeah, the punk thing was holy great. shit. Yeah, but I will like, say yeah. this real quick, real quick. I will say this though the the John Cena pop. I mean, it didn't touch Punk's True. pop, but my True. God, True. was there a pop there? I mean, so he, and just the fact that everybody used to boo him and then cheer him, and he had that mixture. That whole crowd went ape shit. 
when that music hit. All yeah. right. So I'm and he said go acknowledge on right. this one, and I'm going to take it literally again as well as story of the year. So you got Brian Danielson going from WWE to AEW, Charlotte and Becky's backstage, CM Punk returns, Flair's dark side of the ring story, NXT's rebranding, and WWE releases 80 wrestlers. Now, if it was moment of the year, CM Punk's return was the moment of the year. Agree. Um, shocking moment of the year, I would say, uh, even though most of the releases I agree with, I didn't think they were a big deal anyway, but the amount of releases is huge. I think the story, like we talked about earlier, main eventing WrestleMania and then doing what he's doing in AEW is Brian Danielson's story of the year. CJ? Um, I'm going to actually flip the script a little bit and I'll explain very briefly. Uh, if you You're always go, brief. Feel, feel free to elaborate, man. You got a lot you of knowledge, go bro. Share it. Story of the story. year. I'm yes. going to go with NXT 2.0 rebranding because if you think about it, you're going from the NXT black and yellow, which was, in Huge. my opinion, and Over. many others, the number one wrestling show every week until AEW Dynamite came on. So it, it was like a total 180. You know, so how can that not be a big story? And a lot of people were talking about the differences between, you know, the black and gold brand and, and 2.0. Good point. I mean, you don't have to like the story to pick story. No, here. Exactly. I dig that. I love that pick. I love that shout. We'll let Doc go last with Bodie. So, Ray, story of the year in 2021. I, I agree with you. Moment of the year is definitely punk. Oh, for sure. Um, the flare dark side of the ring was, you know, kind of a big deal. But again, it had a very short lifespan. Controversy right. of the year, maybe. I, I agree <laughs> with the NX 2.0 rebranding being like a huge story just because, you know, talk about a fall from grace and, you know, yeah. taking so something everybody loves. Charlotte and Becky, again, not yeah. enough. You yeah. know, it's kind of a thing. I love the Danielson story, but the story of the year, if we're talking about what has controlled headlines all year what has the most debate all year what is caused them is wwe releasing 80 wrestlers yeah because literally every week they're talking about either another release or another reason while maybe they're prepping True. for sale the company's on its ear what the fuck are they doing etc 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 right it has been an entire year long of head scratching moves that just never ends it's a it's a new cycle that keeps repeating mm -hmm. and the questions are never answered so to me, that's and they never will be here. Yeah. And it, it's going to continue, unfortunately, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've ever seen okay. 80 wrestlers from a company release. Yeah. I mean, it would, if, if any company is going to release 80 in a year, it would have to be WWE. But that's a great yeah, shout because, because it has, no it has, has that taken that over many. the headlines throughout the whole year. So that's a Literally great shout Literally every as well. single show that we've had, we've had, what, 10, 11 shows now. We have mm -hmm. talked in some form or facet about, about the rele yep. WWE Releases, releasing. We yep. started this show off tonight with Tony Storm, yep. whether yep. she asked for her release or not. But I'm just mm -hmm. saying this has been such an overarching, over-encompassing story all year that this this has to be the story of the year. Yep. Great point. Great point. I don't Doc, disagree. I'm letting Bodie go first because, listen, Bodie cannot hear his uncle's talk. His uncle's talk. So are you ready? Okay. Go ahead, Bodie. Pick your – what is it? WWE released a. <laughs> All right. that that boy got a future. In. He literally legit in. pointed it out, and I was just like, That's "Holy me. shit!" Okay, so that boy has a bright future in booking. I'm telling you, now. <laughs> he does. He's yeah. with his figures. If he I hates you, though, he's the cowboy Bill Watts of booking <laughs> action figures. I hate yeah, drum, he she asked I, for I, drum monkey before Doc goes. She asked for her release, and uh, yes, great. yeah. Yeah. So she, she cites, this uh, is a hard one for me burnout. because I really I the CM Punk returns was such a big deal because if you think about it, man, just as Taz called it, the love fest for the last yeah. <laughs> for this couple of weeks. But you know what, man, he was just happy to be back, and it was cool to see him go in that ring and just be humbled in the beginning in that pop in Chicago. And then ESPN actually covered it, which ESPN True. is usually WWE territory. Yeah, and then for point. them to show that, I know that kind of put a little burn on a couple people's asses in Connecticut. <laughs> but yeah, see, I, I mean, I hate to do a tie, but CM Punk returns, and I'm gonna go with the the rebranding of NXT because a yeah. lot of people were just that. That was a big yeah. hoopla. Like, what's gonna happen? What's this? Yeah, what's nobody that? knows, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then One boom, thing you gotta consider what the Punk story colors to give you Sorry. some props on your your thoughts here. Um. Literally every single pay per view, every single everything is Punk gonna return. Punk's gonna make you know everybody yeah. was expecting Punk chance at every show, and now since he's been back, there's been so much talk of has he lost a step, the booking, yep. etc. I mean, CM Punk is in essence his own story, yeah. You know, going the whole way through. It's just right. 
you know, I, it would definitely, again, you're I, in a 1A, 1B type scenario yeah. here. And again, like I think you'd mentioned earlier, right? I, I wouldn't consider the punk thing as story of the year. I, the feel good moment, moment of the yeah. year by far. Yeah. And we, you know, yeah, and we talked about it too early before the show started. How how CM Punk he didn't he didn't want to be the face of AEW and be in the world title picture right away and hold all these gold. He wanted to mm-hmm. help the young guys. He wanted to get people over. He wanted to be on commentary. I think he which, has promo of the year along with which, MJF. Which, with you saying that, um, you get, give that a people, little time. That'll change. Yeah, pe- yeah. people may not oh, yeah. see it on TV, but he probably is helping all these younger guys behind the scenes of what you don't see. So yeah, he's came actually, back to do exactly what he wanted to do. There actually and, was a story that came out and it was, it, the story was technically about Cody Rhodes mm-hmm. saying how unaccessible Cody Rhodes is now as an EVP. Cause he's pulled every direction. He has his own right. dressing room, et cetera. Yeah. But it, it has actually been stated that punk backstage now is uncharacteristically making himself available to the younger talent, talking them through their matches, talking them through things. And being a sounding board for people, even though he does technically have his own dressing room, he hangs out and with talks everybody. More yeah. than, you know, so, I mean, that is an evolution of the man and maybe showing that he does really care, you know, about AEW's young roster. And we, yeah. Anybody who's watched him for his whole career knows how much the man loved wrestling. Yeah. So the, the fact that WWE beat that love out of him was sad. Yeah, and, and he has so much to offer as a coach and as a you know for sure, and so. especially with seeing the changes in his attitude, not saying anything bad against him, but oh, uh, he was a miserable you, son of a bitch. You wouldn't be saying this mm-hmm. about CM Punk ten years ago. No, no, definitely. <laughs> so, so before we get on to the last segment, um, I blew some smoke up Doc's ass because I think he's a great commentary. I look up to him. Um, if I blow smoke up a Ray's ass, he's gonna like it too much. Um, and CJ, for those who don't know, the first time I ever legitimately met CJ Sensation was in a little VFW arena here <laughs> in southwestern Pennsylvania. Yep. Me and my drunk friends drinking 50 cent beers were yep. chanting Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi at Punk, long haired <laughs> Punk, pissing him off. He got up on the top rope and yelled, Little did I know, the man who defeated Punk that night. He's right next to me here. Yes, CJ sir. Sentation. Miley Cyrus loving son of a bitch. No, I this think guy I was, got a win I, over CM Punk, motherfuckers. Get it. <laughs> I, you were a mantis still, at that point, were you? No, I was I think I was still doing the 112 peaches and cream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you were. Yes, you were. I don't remember yeah, to much quote CJ years ago when I talked to him about this. Yeah, CM Punk, he put me over and he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I do remember yeah. that quote. But, it was uh, a good match. I watched it back a while that, ago. It was short, but I think it was only like five minutes. But yeah, the only part I really remember is Punk getting up on the on the top turnbuckle, yelling at us for yelling Pepsi <laughs> for, for like incessantly drunk fools. There was four of us, but yeah, I got to give a big shout to CJ you Sensation. It. CJ He's Sensation worked. only doing a five minute match. I would never no. imagine <laughs> if ten or twelve minutes on the booking sheet for his match. He'd come back four and a half minutes later. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And he was hey, like, I got a DJ. Less is more. So you guys like, know so why. Like, why like, I wanted I to do this, this story podcast. In four minutes. I'm good at what I do. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah these like, guys. I, like, I, 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 <laughs> honestly, in in I, I mean, Ray and Doc could probably attest to this. Depending <laughs> on the circumstances, I would rather have people go a few minutes short, yeah, than go fucking five ten minutes over, which I've seen a lot recently, and mm-hmm. and that's got to change. It's not it a does. recent thing, dude. We've always had those problems with timing issues. I mean, mm-hmm. when you give somebody 12 to 14 minutes with entrances and 22 minutes later, you're like, motherfucker, bring it home. We got a schedule yeah. to keep. You yeah. Because the show's supposed to end at 11 and we're, we're curtain calling at 12, 30. Speaking of that, that's a we problem. Were trying to, we're going to keep us under two hours for the first time here. We're we keep are. Our schedule. With, yeah. But I, I, have to, I have to promote these guys from the Real Deal podcast I used to listen to after pay-per-views and stuff at night. Yep. This guy below me has wrestled some big names, you know. He's 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 been in matches with tag teams. He's promoted. He's announced. This guy's fought, you know, everybody under the sun, and also a referee in a lot of places. Yep. And I'll, I'll kiss Doc's ass even more. He's been doing <laughs> what he's doing for Quit so kissing long. Kissing my ass 
in about 35 <laughs> seconds. You got you got a little bit more. Go ahead. I mean, just uh, 35 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> but I got to give shouts to you guys. I, I, I need to I let, let my it. people that have been Thank with you. me for five years know why I wanted to do this podcast. And right. these guys got experience. We're not just four dudes shooting just shit so over you wrestling. Know, I had to pester Mr. Blaze McCoy for about a year and a half. To get the time was right. I had to wait. I mean, yeah, it, it took us a while to get it going. We went to the first <laughs> AEW show in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I put the fucking bug in his ass, and we just started ten weeks ago. Yeah, it's still and we in started there. planning. For me? We started. Wow, shit. We started planning in a <laughs> McDonald's parking lot because I, I don't right. know if anybody understands. Sometimes Denny's, they there might was, be twenty four hours, but when they feel like Don't closing, grand, they close. No, it was McDonald's. Your audio's off, Doc. It should be on. It's on, but not it's... off, but you're delayed. Oh, oh sorry. Only, you can be you to... can be the Chinese Godzilla movie. <laughs> the, only oh, Godzilla. Kick, the only way to kick it back in, Doc, is to leave and I'll re add you and you'll be fine. Okay. Bye, bitch. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Just click on the link and come back. But As yeah. We, let me As last so, the uh the since last you gave segment. everybody else props, let's give Blaze props for building oh, his own sure. little niche in the wrestling community. Yeah. And now being the producer and host of the new WrestleSense podcast. And uh, really, without him doing all the background work that he does, we would not have time to do this shit. No. CJ obviously has, you know, job, I got time surgery, right now. refing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These guys have, have jobs and families I don't. Let's put it that I way. This <laughs> is going on, plus a family. Doc has, you know, his pleasure, commentary dude. career, his full time yeah. career, plus a family. And Blaze has. A wrestling community that he has built. We love you guys already, yeah, and we're hoping that we sure. can help him build it even more. And I mean, is, is I don't he like to back or what's he I don't doing? like to pat myself <laughs> on the back, but I will. That the fact that we just crossed two thousand subscribers here on YouTube, and that's big. That's big. Nice. It was tough to get to a thousand to get monetized, but we just hit two thousand. If um, I could smack could... your ass right now and give you an attaboy, I'd, I'd, if you do, guys I'd love, give you if, a reach around. If, <laughs> if you guys love uh, NFL football, I do Red Zone podcast. Those streams have been getting anywhere from seven thousand to nine thousand views. Nice. Um, we're getting fifty to sixty new subscribers every week. I'll be doing that's NFL. Awesome. And since it's been doing so well, I promised to do some NFL playoffs, and I'm probably going to also do the Super Bowl. And I'm thinking uh, I love basketball is my shtick. I, I'm going to try to do some NBA games for you guys out there. As long as I can keep my my voice, I'm in the I middle of 11 days stretch. I can join you for a playoff weekend. Playoffs, playoffs. And, yeah, what I else I want to do, which Whoa. I know won't, uh, won't get your as, audio is still off. It looks it, like it won't Doc. get as it's it'll catch. It won't That's get fine. as many views, there but the go. return this know. spring of the USFL on TV and the Pittsburgh Maulers, baby. Oh, so you're gonna see a, you're gonna see a bunch of content here from the uh, Blaze Radio Network and more so, specifically the Wrestle Sense podcast. I gotta say this because I want to say this: Drum Monkey and PFW. Yes, that damn game keeps getting delayed. And I am, for one, waiting for WWE 2K21. Well, as far as I know, it's still... There's a 22. 22, pardon 22 22 now. They skipped 21 entirely. It's still on schedule for March, but I'm sure there's somebody right now. Tony Storm! Oh! 2020 was so bad that they were like... Practice, not a game, not a game. As soon as he signed uh, Brian Danielson, Vince was on the phone. Get him the fuck out! (laughs) <laughs> this ain't gonna be good shit. Surprisingly, no. Bray Wyatt apparently is still gonna be in the game. Yep. Well, what? That's because he's coming name. back. And they own the name. And if he goes anywhere else, it won't be as Bray Wyatt, so they can still use the name and likeness if they want. So I, I, I don't mind that at all. I mean, they got and Ray, Ray that Mysterio is gonna be fuck. on the cover. They're gonna the announce it probably called soon. Two K twenty. They have to do something. So yeah, add some of those guys back. I think they deserve right. it after being stuck in that game. Oh. We're we're gonna make we last last show we concentrated a lot on AEW so we are gonna make our picks now we don't like to use the c word not the c u n t word but the other c word here on the show but we're talking about a lot of people that are getting Talk. sick <laughs> a lot of people are getting sick let's put it that yeah, way in don't WWE. use the c word we're not allowed so this this show may change. diagnosed this change this show may change a lot we're gonna take it for what it's worth but let's go ahead and give our six <laughs> All 
All right, so we are bringing back our big picker, as I like to call it. And I was oh, the no. first winner. I held the belt for the first time, but Doc took it off me. So our current champion with our pickums, our big picker is uh, Doc. We got to so work on that name. The big picker. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. My, well, here's where it's from. My dad and his friends have had a, a NFL and college football pickum sheet that they've done since 1973. I wish be, I had a big picker. Be, that's why I like it, the innuendo <laughs> right there. And that's why I want to use it. Since 1973, they've had this. Now, because of people getting sick and what's going on in the world, they had to stop it. So it has died over the last year, and I want to try to kind of keep it alive somewhere. All right. So for, for now, it. there's a there, there you go. We got Chucky joining us. It's so my good gonna, luck charm. So we're whenever gonna, I rub him for luck. You guys in the chat, make Get sure out. you guys put, also put tell us – who you think's going yeah. to win these punch, matches punch, punch. before we get to the first match. And uh, let's see, we have eight. There's nine total matches from what I see. Like I said, this match card could change completely. So Cards if the match, to Omicron. If the yeah. match doesn't happen, <laughs> how I have it presented, we will not count it in the ranking. So if one person's out of the fatal four way or something like that, it won't count because we want to take it for what it's worth. The uh, pre-show match is Ricochet and Cesaro versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. And we'll start with the champion, Doc, taking his pick first. Who's going to win that? Sheamus and Ridge Holland. As much as I hate to say it, uh, they're they're definitely going over on that one. All right. Doc takes that one. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing. And I, I hate to say it, too, because I love Cesaro and Ricochet. But the way I'm just trying to predict. So the way Ricochet has been used, I think Ridge Holland gets a pin over Ricochet in this one. So I am also going to take Ridge and Sheamus. Ray? Who is the two best wrestlers in WWE? Ricochet. That would be Cesaro and Ricochet. Who are the two most misbooked people in WWE? That would be <laughs> Cesaro and Ricochet, which means they're going to take the, the the L. All right. And put so, over Sheamus and Ridge. Ray also this makes Sheamus sad. and Ridge. Uh, CJ. <laughs> CJ. Fuck you guys. I'm going Cesaro and Ricochet, but I, I have knew, to disagree. Uh, you're I just doing it for the numbers, bitch. <laughs> it's, good. Think... It's, it's smart. Smart Although picking. I think Ricochet is good, I don't know if I would put him top two wrestlers in WWE. I didn't mean like top one. I know, two, I know. I'm just saying like. Yeah. By the way, day I'm, one is in Atlanta. So I will go ahead and give a shout out real quick to my Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, they're doing real good. What's Yeah, they're, they're doing playoffs? horrifying. They're doing What's horrifying, that? but hey, rise up. What? All right, back to the uh, current big picker champion here. We got the Intercontinental Championship, Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Take your pick, Doc. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go with Sami Zayn. As right. much as I love N N Nakamura, um, I think Sami Zayn, after the ass beating that he's taken for the last couple of weeks, I think this will be a payoff for him. Okay, Ray. Smart booking says Zayn. All right, says which Ray. means it's probably Nakamura, but I'm gonna hope that hope that we get a goddamn clue in this company, mm -mm. and they put Good. the belt on Zayn. Don't hold your breath. Okay, CJ. I'm going Zane. He's done a lot of stuff recently that, you know, people are paying attention to. Plus, they're trying to get him to resign if he hasn't already. What a better way to do that than to slap gold on you. Right. Yeah, that that's, you know, just for the sake of numbers as well. I'm going to go Nakamura, and I'm going to say that they fight again, and I could see Zane winning it later on. But I think the fact that Nakamura has boogs in his corner could come into play as, as we had our little buddy uh, – uh, Bodie say in one of the last ones and predicted it right on the spot, but I, I will go... say that I think this will be match of the night if they Could give be. them more than five minutes. If they if give them the old NXT the match that they did when they first, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, All the right. NXT match was amazing between yeah. these two. So, so I, yeah, I'd love to see anything near what they've done so one previously with, the with these two for the win. I like that. <laughs> the one with the hairy chin for the win, yeah, Jessica, a good one, good one. Shinsuke Boogs is too entertaining. There you go. Okay, uh, back to the champ, Doc. Or let's let's reverse it. I'll start yeah, with me here it, in this one. Um, New Day versus the Usos Tag Team Championship. Um, uh, I'm going to say the Usos. Well, this is tough because it's day one. You could argue that both of them kind of have their name recognition as far as the name of the pay-per-view as well with day one-ish and the, the New Day as well. So it's a tough call because – you know, That's right now, your premise for picking. What the fuck are we no, talking about? I'm just yeah. saying they have they have a correlation <laughs> with the name. Both teams have a correlation with the name. It has nothing to do with my pick. My pick is going to have to do with something that might happen later on in the night. And I'm gonna go Usos. Uh, CJ, I'm going. Uh, I've been down with day one ish, so I'm gonna go with the Usos too. 
It's going to be the Usos. Usos. Says Usos. Ray. Unfortunately, I, I mean, it'll be a great match because everyone oh, yeah. had is, but unfortunately, we've seen this 783 times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I just don't see them taking the titles off the yeah. bloodline right now. Yeah. Now, before is, before, before we get to the right next now. match, I, I forgot to mention this. Now, in ROH news, and uh, and you guys might know a little better than me, the, the title is staying alive throughout yeah. the time of their hiatus. And um, I guess Gresham has his own company, Terminus. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to have its first show that. sometime in February, I think. And Maybe it's Van, January. Bandito will now defend the ROH World Championship. He's back against Baron Black uh, January 16th. Is uh, I guess that's the first term in his show. So Gresham with his own company, and then on the oh, the day before on the fifteenth, Gresham will defend his ROH World Championship against Two Cold Scorpio in GCW. Nice. Oh boy. So That'll pretty, be pretty good. Pretty cool stuff going on outside of WWE and AEW. So I don't want you guys to think that's all we're talking about. All right, coming up next, we have the other tag championships. RK Bro. Going up against the um, Street Profits. Uh, CJ first. Um, this this is a toss up for me, actually. I mean, I love the Street Profits, but I think RK Bro has too much steam rolling in their favor. So I'd say you you, you if I were booking, I'd keep it with RK Bro. Okay. The obvious uh, pay, the obvious payoff here is that Orton is going to turn. Or possibly Riddle turn, uh, and they're going to have a WrestleMania match. They won't be tag team champs by WrestleMania. They'll be versing each other in one a, a mm. high profile match. But I think it's too early for that split to happen yet. Agreed. Maybe, uh, maybe the Rumble, maybe the pay per view after the Rumble. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say that RK Bro holds on to him this time. But Here you go. We know got that it. that clock is ticking. In Terminus, Gresham versus Josh Alexander. That's that could be a banger. Be fucking, oh, it's. I, I think we've done that before in IWC. And, it and that was means a Gresham's, Gresham's fighting on the 15th and the 16th back-to-back days. One uh, one on his show and one for his title on GTW. I mean, he's a fucking worker. That's what we That's do. That's awesome. Um, Doc. Uh, RK Bro. They break up at Royal Rumble. The, I, I see one of them eliminating the other in the Rumble, and that's how it kind of starts the downfall. It would have to be Riddle throwing Orton over and then Orton. Yeah. Turn. I'm actually mm-hmm. going to go with the same thing. I can't really see. I, I kind of feel the same. We got a consensus here. I think uh, the WrestleMania match will be Riddle versus our, uh, uh, Randy. And it's a matter of who does what to who to finally get it to that point. I think it happens later on. So I'm gonna I go would RK love bro. to see them flip Riddle as the heel. That's what I Me was too. just about to expecting. say. I mean, he's working that shaman gimmick in yeah. NXT, which I don't know if they're really heel or face uh, either way. Uh, that tag team, but we'll see. Here's a match I could give two shits this about. This is but... going to be a consensus. I, I, I'll just speak for everybody. Drew. <laughs> no. Here, here's the, DJ here's says, the I'm not happy that. about this. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Here's the caveat of that. Let, let's pick this. Does the match go over 60 seconds? I say, uh, no. yes. I say, no. I say, I say, I say, I say three minutes tops. I say, minutes. yes, just because of Corbin. Yeah. So everybody's saying Drew here? Mm-hmm. I'm saying Drew in under a minute. Okay. I'm saying Drew in three. <laughs> All right, Next. that was easy, easy enough. <laughs> it is a terrible match, John Monkey. I can't. I have to concur. Um, Miz versus. The reason is this event should even sell Edge, tape. and I'm going to take Edge in this one to start us off, Doc. I'm going to go Miz. And the reason I say I'm going to go Miz is because, you know, both of them, I mean, Edge has sold him so much on the mic, just giving him his accolades, you know, different things. Even mentioning that he was mentioned on AEW in in that certain way he was mentioned. Um, I think I think Miz gets some kind of dirty pin, but Miz gets it. Well, we see Beth finally. That's another question. Uh, uh, Ray. Uh, I believe we are going to see Edge win because I think this is just a filler feud to get edge to owens um they already ran the edge owens match at madison square garden i feel like that's probably the wrestlemania program for edge uh so i'm going to go unless they are going to bring beth back and do the mixed tag match in which case it would make sense as doc said but i'm gonna i'm gonna go with edge i think this is just a blow-off feud and uh and we're just biding our time Cool. I think Edge wants to put him over too, in a way. You know what I mean? I think Edge, you know, Edge is all about giving back and stuff. So I think that's what you're going to see. What the fuck's uh, this Audrey Hepburn? Do bullshit? I not get the pick? Nah, 
Fuck you. I thought C- you were... oh, CJ no. didn't CJ, get the pick. Go no. Go Good, CJ. Uh, Edger Miz. Guess, what, what are we, What are you? A piece of shit or something, buddy? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, 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 Ma, I'd like. Me, I'd, oh, fuck. <laughs> we fucking want it out. <laughs> I'd like to see Miz, but I. It's gonna be Edge. Mm. That was super anticlimactic. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. I mean, you already fucked yeah, I agree me. I apologize. <laughs> I, normally, it's Doc that I forget a bit about, so I forgot about Ray. Blaze, I mean, the DJ sensation. We want it now. I'm trying. I got to get digs on people because Easy E's not here for us to clown on. So yeah, um, where is he, man? CJ, I'll let you go next, so I don't forget you here, Becky. He's and released. Liv. No. Um. Again, if I were booking, and that's what my pick is going to be, if I were booking. And you guys may disagree with me. I would put it on live. Okay. Now's the time to pull the trigger. Ray? Uh, I agree with CJ. I, I think if you're going to do it, it needs to be now. Um, they, they've had that vignette on her telling her whole story and blah, blah, blah. If, if this all leads to dick all, it's just another yeah, uh, another letdown. I, I, I think she needs to win. And then have Becky chase it, whether whether Liv holds it for a long time or not. Right. I think she needs the win. Doc. Liv. That's all I'm saying. Liv. Yeah. They uh, said they both answered it themselves. I mean, they both I, answered I mean, everything. Yeah, so. I, I kind of feel that maybe whoever's Becky's going to fight next helps comes down or whatever. It may not be the end of the match or screw job, but. You know, they were building Tony and Liv to be possible champs at some point. Now Tony's gone. So right. like, I, th- I think you guys are right. Put it on Liv while strike while the iron's hot. I mean, how can you not? Like I said, if I'm booking it, I mean, Becky's always going to be Becky. Put it on Liv. And Becky's had her moments this year already. Let's yeah. give someone else a fucking moment, please. No, we're probably all wrong, and Becky just destroys oh, I'm sure, her. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we're all wrong, but it's... Uh, okay, uh, the big four here. And like I said, if anyone's not in this match, this will not count here. But we're going to start out with Ray on this one. Who will be your champion after? This is this is the toughest. If all four fight, this is my – it's the toughest call in my opinion. Yeah. I'm going to tell see, you what I want to happen. But I can see reasons for all four. It's probably the same as me. <laughs> Kevin Owens goes over because I want to see either Big E chase the title to Mania – or Edge just chase the title to Mania um, with with Owens. I love E as champion. I think he's – I love Big E, period. However, mm-hmm. his championship has kind of fell flat. Yeah. I think he would do much better chasing the belt right now to help get him that More next over, little step yeah. over. Mm-hmm. Um, is I don't see – I don't see the Rollins thing. I see the comments there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's the right time for Rollins. He's so good character work right now. He doesn't need the belt. Exactly. I, I'd like to see it be Owens. Okay. Ray, I mean, Doc. Uh, I want it to be Owens too. I mean, you know, I have to have a new WrestleMania KO shirt for this year. <laughs> uh, I have them all. So uh, number two, I don't know, man. I mean, with Lashley in the fold, that just, that, that just throws it off because shit. This is a hard one. This is. is a very hard one. I want Owens, but I honestly, I, I, I unfortunately see Big E retaining. All right. I just, well, I see Big E retaining. CJ. I'm going Owens. I, do I think it's going to happen? No, but I'll be okay if I'm wrong. But I'm okay. going Owens. Um, I, I see the teasing of the Bobby Lashley face turn. I think it might happen here without him winning. Uh, MVP could have something to do with it. I've said this before. Any four-way matches like this should be fucking elimination mm-hmm. because of the fact that, you know, they could... And, and a, a month ago when this started, I thought KO's taking the pinfall just, you know, for, for Big E to retain. But I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to say Seth grabs the title. And with with what you just said with it not being elimination, that gives me a glimpse of hope that Kevin may actually win. True, yeah. very true. Good point. So that, I mean, I hope he wins, but I hopefully all four are healthy. I really want to see this match. If if any match on this whole card, this is the one I want to see. But actually, this one I, I want to see big time too. I'll start it out and we'll go backwards to the champ doc for the last pick. Um, I see the dissension with uh, Paul Heyman continuing. I see a screw job ending somehow where Roman Reigns retains, Brock wins the Rumble, and we see these two again at Mania. CJ. Um, 
the third. Sister, I've been calling that for a while. I've, I've never Mania. been a fan of Brock being champion since you could call him, I guess, a part timer, if you will. But yeah. I'd like to see Brock win it, and then you could do him and Roman again at uh, Mania. For the rematch, yep, that works as well to, to get to that third match. So uh, CJ takes Brock. I'm taking Roman Ray. Uh, I think we're going to see a screw job. I agree with that. Um, obviously, they're working towards Brock and Reigns number 37 at WrestleMania. <laughs> right. Um, if you're going to put the belt on Brock, it would be the time to have Heyman flip. Right. Cost Reigns yeah. the match, and then Reigns wins it back at Mania. I would love that. Um, so I'm I'm gonna go that route. I'm gonna say Brock wins it. Mm-hmm. Um, because most of our picks have been the same today, so I'm gonna mm-hmm. take the flyer here. Even though what I think is gonna happen is that Heyman comes out with Brock, turns on him, and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But we're gonna hope for we're gonna hope for good booking, even yeah. though. <laughs> we've been fooled before. We're, we're all hoping for good book. Hopes and yeah. dreams. Hopes Don't and hope dreams. Your breath. Okay, Doc, bring it home. House Roman. is going down. Roman. That's all I'm going to say. Roman. Screw job. Heyman. Like they said. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I was thinking it. They said it. Well, that that is it. They see if the chat. Now, we have three matches the Drew match, the Usos, New Day, and the Becky Live, where we all pick the same. Mm-hmm. So instead of nine. We're down to six matches for uh, to see what happens. And like I said, supremacy. we got to see who uh, how this uh, show. Hopefully everyone's healthy enough to be at the show and uh, give us that card. Because I think it could be a pretty damn good show to kick it off. It could be year. decent if done right. But we know it's not going to get done right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no one's talking about, you know, like a big uh, return or a debut or anything here. You know, it's, it's, it's just I mean, pretty much set the way. They'll you be lucky didn't to do get the your, show off. Uh, your Wyndham watch, I could see. Yeah, there. the weekly Wyndham watch we had, didn't yeah. talk about, so we could touch it before we leave. And that's there's a. If it's, it's going to happen, it's going to be Rumble. I'm yeah. torn. I'm torn at this point. I was. Big I think time he's. I, I'm, I'm more and more every day. I'm thinking he's going back to WWE just because people don't think he will with how right he now. outspoke. Yep. So. I'm 50 50. If they want to, yeah, like, like, I, my complaint was always he was bashing how he was being used. Why would he go back? But maybe he wants to try to mend it. Maybe they That's come to an agreement. That's all the more reason why he would yeah, to go back. So I could see that. So we'll see how that happens. Uh, well, they definitely freed up enough money to pay him if necessary. Yeah, true, true. All right. So, uh, that was it for tonight. We talked about, uh, Veers coming all over everybody earlier tonight. <laughs> we talked about Tony Storm making me come all over everybody earlier tonight. Wow. Yeah. Um, I like it. <laughs> we did the year end awards, which will be Big uh, was, party. Was fun to, to blast. I will be live with an LTD show right after this, continuing our stable wars. Um, and we'll find out how the new how the day one uh pans out and see if Doc could hold on to that title belt. Yeah. Ray, nah, final not. words from the big guy. Uh one second. And happy new year to everybody out there. Uh, yeah, for sure. At, definitely. Hope you uh, 2022 is just as good as 2021. It's backwards, but would like to wish easy. It's e, backwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. This thing flips everything. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Ooh. Boo, says Doc. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just Good kidding, but uh, we love it. We love E. He's not here, but our fifth member, our heel persona, is not here. But whenever closer. Blaze cuts our membership checks, his is getting docked for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Doc, uh, Doc, you always talk about what's going on in indie world here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Any news coming up on shows? Next weekend, not this not this coming weekend, of course, but next weekend in Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, Mad Max Morrison will be taking on the Revron Hunt for the Eclipse Heavyweight Championship. So nice. definitely, if you're near the Altoona area, please come on out, man. Bell time, 7 o'clock. Support now, I always say it, too. If you look in the in the um, description of this channel, there are links to all four Rise Wrestling, uh, ICW, uh, oh, RWA, oh. IWC, 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 IWC. IWC. Uh, it's in the links. It's right down it's all there. Good, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, and Jim Ross said WWE. Go fuck yourselves, everybody. Oh, <laughs> RWA. RWA as well, and they don't have a world. They don't Dude, have a champ right now, right? RWA right now. further away. Less yes, day. they did. They, uh, they I saw they the announcement strip, today. They stripped uh, J Rock of the title. I think it's blasphemy, and I think it's wrong. Hey, and we'll get into that another time. time. And IndieWrestling.us, the links below as well. You can watch 
a lot of these indie feds around southwestern Pennsylvania right on YouTube. And you can hear this guy commentate as well. CJ Sensation, final words for the show. Uh, got, the man of uh, few words. Let me, let me look at my calendar here. RWA, like, uh, stripping belts and burking felts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Looks like uh, uh, January the 15th, we got 2PW at the Worthington Civic Center. Uh, and January 22nd, we got IWC's uh, reset button, which is always one of my favorite shows of the year. What what's, what, what's a re, what do they do on a reset button? Uh, um, there is uh, random picks of uh, all the champions' opponents, and I actually oh, was cool. picked a few years ago for the Super Indie Title match. So awesome stuff! Yes. Spoiler: DH Bruiser will be drawn to fight somebody <laughs> and will not show up because he's fat. Out of shape. <laughs> Spoiler: It will not be me. So, uh, I got about three or four months. I would like to back in tomorrow action. night. I am coming out of retirement. It's going to be me coming versus out. a New Year's Eve buffet that I'm going to fuck up. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, like it. It. I like so, it. Uh, we hey, uh, may not have Doc next week, but if we do, it'll be from a remote surprise location. Stay you want to do surprise? Okay, surprise then. Yeah. So I'll next week, vagina. if we have nice. Doc on the show, it'll be from a nice. very big surprise. I want you no, guys to I'm not to getting back sure my ex wife. Sorry. What? That's not a oh, hooker. Geez. That's a Garthok, remember? Yeah, yeah. Don't snark with a Garthok. Sounds uh, good, Riley. Yeah, send that over, brother. We're going to uh, blast hey, off. For me and my family, Happy New Year's, everybody. Yes. Happy uh, New Year. And we're going to send us out before the outro, repping all the members of the channel as well. We thank you all. You're making this happen as well. And big things in the year 2022 for the Wrestle Sense podcast sure. right here on the Blaze Radio Network. Peace. Big thing. and then dial your operator.